It's time to fire this thing up. Hit it. What we have here, guys, is a brand new inner liner for a 17-foot boat. This particular one happens to be for the 17-foot Matan Classic Collection. And Mike Borelli, the owner, actually is making a brand new line of boats that are very much into the retro kind of facet. This particular one is a retro of the classic 17-foot Boston Whaler Montauk. This is a 1982 17-foot Boston Whaler Montauk. Happens to be owned by a girl named Taylor White. She's 18, going into the Coast Guard. She won a promotion with us called Are You Fit for the Ultimate Refit? And kind of what we did last time on the program is we put in some 1708 knitted by axle in three different directions up front. We showed you how to vacuum bag in some stringers. We resin infused the transom and where we left is with this man's son, Joey Borelli, was actually putting in some four inch wide 1708 knitted by axle all the way around the inside. Now, the team kind of told me by the next time I get up here, the inner liner is gonna be bonded in. But Mike was telling me on the phone that he had an idea, a special idea for the flotation foam that he wants to put into Taylor's boat. When he described it to me, I said, please stop the presses don't put that inner liner in. I think my audience is going to freak out when they see what your vision is here because it's so unique. But what we have, guys, is a little bit of time. So what I want to do is I want to run some footage that we shot a couple weeks back at the Palm Beach International Boat Show with Bill McDaniel from Sombrella. And I'm telling you, listen up. This is some pretty good advice. I'd like to talk with you today about replacement fabrics. Hi, I'm Bill McDaniel, the Marine Market Manager for Sombrella Fabrics. You know, the average age of a boat today is between 19 and 20 years old. And at that age, there's going to be a need, as well as an opportunity, to replace canvas products on your boat. Whether it's the bimini top, or the cockpit cover, or the bow cover, whatever it might be, those items are going to need to be replaced. Unfortunately, people make the mistake of saying I'm going to buy cheaper fabric because it costs a little bit less and actually that's not the way to go. Sombrella has been produced in the United States since 1960. We have an excellent track record of performance and basically it's the products backed up by a brand warranty of 10 years. So when you buy Sombrella, you buy and replace your fabric, you pay for it once, you don't have to replace it two, three, four times over a 10, 12, even 15 year period. So buy it once, buy the brand, buy the quality, and protect your investment. To find your color preference, simply go to sombrella.com forward slash shipshape. Shipshape TV, where boat improvement lives, is made possible by the entire collection of beautiful Sunbrella fabrics. Sunbrella, the only fabric to offer both design and performance above and below deck by Boat Outfitters, your source for replacement hardware, Custom King starboard doors, tackle centers, and more. Need it? They'll build it. Visit BoatOutfitters.com to update or customize your boat today. By Yamaha. Reliability starts here. And by the TaylorMade Group, leading marine manufacturers of original and replacement boat tops and covers. Windshields, windows, and hard to find replacement parts. Aftermarket accessories our all-new custom T-top covers, and more. Let us help you make your boat look ship shape again. Welcome back aboard. Fishing for boat improvement? Well, you caught it right here at Ship Shape TV. Mike Borelli, the owner of Matan Marine Restoration, has been very busy gathering up a lot of materials and kind of tools that we're I mean, going to be running needing. running around like a madman today in order to put the flotation foam into this 17-foot Boston Whaler Montauk. You were being so demanding getting this boat done for Taylor. But you told me that you do it 
unlike anybody else does it in the marine industry, a lot of guys, when they're putting in the flotation foam guys in between the inner liner and the hull, is they'll inject it, okay? Um, we're not doing it here. Tell everybody the material. What, what, first off, this looks like the bag that we've been using when we vacuum bagged in the stringers and the same material that we used when we were resin infusing the transom. Um, what, what's the bag material and, and the sealant tape going all the way around the perimeter and show everybody that, what's that all about? All right, John, really straightforward. We're gonna use the same bag material and the same sealant tape, like you said, from our vacuum bag and our vacuum infusion. What we're gonna do is we're actually using this. This time we wanna keep it flat, no pleats. We want this almost like a plastic roof for the foam. I saw you with a heat gun, Mike. You were actually heating some uh, vacuum tubing up front, mm -hmm. and you can see that it's kind of draping up over the side okay yeah. and everything so we're going to be drawing vacuum on this but my question is with the uh flotation foam is is this boat going to need to be pitched at all we're are you going to do anything that way we're going to pitch it probably about 30 degrees we just want to keep the concentration of our pour in one location let the entire pour grow from one location john over the years i've seen boat builders do it and i'm sure some folks out there who have played with this foam before do it they think that if they want to fill up one big area, they have to pour a river of it. It's a big mistake, John, because there's no consistency if you're just pouring it over a 10, 15, 12 foot area. Right. And what'll happen is there's no consistency. So John, you'll end up with- Mushrooms oh, oh, and it, it's all a kinds mess. of stuff. So, Waves, fold overs, and all of that. So at least if we had to do a second pour for whatever reason, right? We're pouring right up against a previous pour, flat up against it. Okay. And that's a lot better way of doing it. But I think if all the years in geometry and algebra work out, I think I got this pretty close, John. Okay, you calculated in this center section about how many uh, ounces or gallons of the flotation foam we're gonna need. Could, could you explain how the flotation, it's two parts, how these work together to, to make flotation foam? Well, John, I did some calculations. To be precise, it came out to 29.67 pints six, seven pints, so we're gonna go with 30 pints. Okay. okay. Every pint of mixed material, you take eight ounces of part A, eight ounces of part B, mix it together, put it in a perfect cubic foot box, like the boxes we get our gallons of paint in, it'll fill that box up perfectly. So every pint makes a cubic foot, which produces 65 pounds of flotation. Show everybody where you're gonna pour it. What's the one spot you're gonna pour it in? We're gonna pour it right in the back of the transom. So we're gonna put you in, you're gonna help me on this, okay? Absolutely. All right, we're gonna put this bag down very tightly. We're just gonna leave the back open, John, and we're gonna have somebody else help us. We're gonna mix up our, what, 30 pints. We're gonna pour it in that one location. You and I are gonna put the bag on our last sealant tape right here. We're gonna it's, let... it's gonna draw tight. It's gonna be like a real taut roof. Yeah. The foam's gonna grow up the cavity. And as... yet we're keeping it contained. Mm -hmm. We're drawing vacuum on it. And Mike, nobody does it this way. This is cool. Not that I'm aware of. All right, well guys, we need to take a very short time out, but when we come back, all our flotation foam is gonna be in. And hopefully we are then going to put the inner liner into Taylor White's boat. We'll cover it right after this. Stay bolted. Chip Shape TV will be back in a snap. If you'd like to watch today's episode again, go to our website, shipshapetv.com, and watch it free on any device, anytime, anywhere in the world. Tell a boating friend today. I don't know if you guys can see the big gouge that I put into the side of my Yamaha 300 Cowling. And I'm telling you, I, I'm an idiot. Um, Miguel, what happened is it was high tide, the family and I went out on my 32 foot CV, had a great day, came back after dark, and I did not realize that it was one of those extremely low tides, and I normally keep the boat on the boat lift, okay? So I never trimmed the engines up. Right. So the boat's in the water overnight, and Hayden and I figured it's probably a good idea to you know, flush the engines, we've been running in salt water all day, thermostats are still open, well it's dark. So I'm trimming up the engines, Hayden's back there fiddling with, and I hear this scrape. I did not realize that my tuna door was left open and there's hardware on it to where it like locks it into place. Oh, yeah. And I'm hearing in the dark this 
scrape going across my cowling and I'm going, oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. This is gonna be expensive. And then I started doing some research on how we could get it addressed. And that kind of led me here. And guys, where we're now at is we are in the Miami-Dade area. We're in, a, we're in a suburb kind of called Hialeah. Mm -hmm. And we're at a company called the Alford Paint Shop. And we have Miguel, the president of the company. And I found out online that they're actually selling do-it-yourself repair kits for cowlings like mine. And I was hoping you could share with everybody in the audience what's in the kit. Sure. So what's in the kit is exactly what we use here at our shop. Same products, same everything. We've got, uh, in this case, this is a Yamaha 1994 to present paint kit for your cowling, as well as the clear, which will go on after the base coat. Okay, so from 1994 to current model year right now, Yamaha has used this exact same gray. That's correct. Was it a different color gray before 1994? It was. In 93 and earlier, they had a little bit bluer tone gray. So with this kit, you get the base gray. Correct. You also get the clear coat finish that goes over top of it. That's correct. Okay. Do you have to be pretty experienced at painting in order to really make it look factory? You got to have some type of, of degree of knowledge on how to paint things. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty simple. Okay. And, and how much is it? In this case, this is $95 kit. It's for the cowling kit as well as we have a kit that is enough to do a whole motor, which is $145 a kit. Okay, what if you're, I'm not the greatest painter in the world, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not. Mike Strickland, and it, it, he's the guy, all right? Um, but if I wanted to hire you guys to actually paint this damaged area, you wouldn't have to paint necessarily the whole cowling. I mean, it's brand new everywhere else. That's correct. Can you do like a spot repair? That's correct, we're gonna do a blend repair on this. Okay, take me through the steps. What would your team actually do to, to transform it from a big scratch and gouge to something beautiful again. Sure. So in this case, what they're going to do is prep that area at 320. They're going to use some uh, filler putty to fill in that low spot where the deep gouge is. Right. Once they do that, we're going to go ahead and sand that or block that with 320 again. Uh, we're then going to use the base coat to paint that area. That's and blend, the gray. That's, that's correct. Okay. Blend that into the, the existing gray. And then we're going to go ahead and use clear coat and do just pass that again. As once that cures, then we're gonna go ahead and buff that and mend the two clears. Okay, how much would a repair, what, what's it gonna cost me to have this repair done by you guys professionally? If we were to do this job, it'd probably cost around $400. What if somebody wanted to hire you and, and you paint the whole cowling, it's, it's severely oxidized, they wanna paint the whole cowling? Correct, if we're restoring the cowling, you're looking at $500 plus the cost of the decals. Okay, so, so if somebody does scrape, a little area across the decal, you offer replacement decals for all the brands as well. That's correct. Okay, guys, some of my research involved calling CV, all right, the boat builder that made my boat. And what I found out is that CV actually uses the outboard paint shop to color match all of their brand new engines to their various color choices on their hull sides, okay? okay. My hull side, Miguel, is, is seafoam green. And I'm thinking about, you know, maybe saving up a little bit of money and then I could color match my Yamaha 300s to the boat. Absolutely. And I think it would look absolutely fantastic. Now, do you work with other boat builders? Uh, CB is located right here in Miami, but do you work with other boat builders? Absolutely. We do a lot of custom work for uh, Invincible boats, Contender boats, uh, Sea Hunter boats, Shearwater boats, Hell's Bay boat work. If you look around this place, it's busy. They've got outboards hanging all over the place. They have professional spray booths, and they have ovens, and they, oh, oh my gosh. A kit, $95, a spot repair, $400, an entire cowling, $500. That's a lot cheaper than buying a brand new $2,200 cowling guys from the factory. Where can we lead people in the audience to you, Miguel? For all your outboard needs, come check us out at outboardpaintshop.com. Miguel, thank you so much. Guys, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back right after this. Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap. Welcome back aboard. Fishing for boat improvement? Well, you caught it right here at ShipShape TV. What you're now seeing is our two-part flotation foam that has kind of been groomed, managed, leveled, Shake. into the hull bottom of Taylor White's boat. And welcome back, we're at Matan Marine Restoration with Mike Borelli, the owner. And Mike, 
I've never seen anybody use the two-part polyurethane foam in conjunction with vacuum, but it was amazing the density and consistency of the foam because this morning you and I used a variety of tools. I was using a handsaw along with a uh, just kind of a straight edge. You got, you got quite a little work out I, there this I'm morning. I'm telling you, huh? but it was working. Yeah, okay. well, you know. You, you, were, wor you were working with a uh, reciprocating saw and we were cutting the foam height down to the stringers and I can't believe how void free this two part polyurethane foam is. When you put it under okay. vacuum, John, it takes all the air out of that environment, so you're gonna get a more dense foam. Now, we also did a series of dry fitting. If you could pan over to the inner liner, this is the new one from the Matan Classic Collection that Taylor picked for her boat. We're about to bond these two pieces together. They also cut this notch down the middle, okay? And if you look at that rigging tube, okay, that's on the inner liner, you will see that um, we're gonna be able to take it right down to the glass. All well, right? John, that's acting as our third string I told you Ab about. Absolutely. Now, what Denny's been doing is he's been mixing up thickened vinyl ester resin, smashing that in there, two layers of 1708. You do things so differently, okay? Remember Whaler's problem, the, the foam gets wet. You cut off all the water possibility of ever getting that's in That's what foam. we're doing, we're encapsulating all the foam, John. So wherever water used to get in, in the boat, we have eliminated any possibility of the foam not only getting water in, but even any condensation that builds up inside the hull over time, John, it's impossible to get to the foam. You were talking about two materials that we're gonna use to bond the hull to the inner liner. One was a product that you refer to as Super Putty. It's my favorite product, it's called Super Putty. It's a vinyl lester reinforced putty. We use it for bonding all the time. And this is definite stringer bonding. So we're gonna use it on our stringers and we're gonna use it on our rigging tube. Okay, so, so down in these wells, you're gonna see that super putty going in, all right? On top of the stringers, you're gonna be seeing the super putty going on. And how, how tall is that super putty gonna be, bud? Well, it's gonna be about an inch and a half of super putty, John, but you'll also see we're gonna end up putting two one inch blocks, one inch by one inch blocks of foam running the whole length of the stringer on each side. John, our putty will go in the middle. This way, when we come down, that putty gets compressed, all the strength you need in the, in the putty, and it doesn't mushroom out. You're getting the full bonding strength of all the putty we're putting in, and we're saving money, John, because we're not wasting all that product just mushrooming out all over the inside of the boat. Just like Mike directed the foam, okay, by tilting the boat up and bagging it to direct it, that's what he's doing with the putty. Your son, last show, left off putting this four inch wide strip all the way around the perimeter, coming up to this Penske board, and, and tell what we're gonna be doing in here with that second product. We're gonna fill this whole trough with the Thacrolate, okay? And what we have here, John, is a half inch by half inch trough. We have about a gap between the bottom of our liner and, and the top of our uh, old hull liner right here. So between that quarter of inch and this half inch, we're gonna put a one inch bead. We're gonna just push it down. It'll just ooze, ooze over just enough of the Penske board here and here. It, it ensures that we have a nice bond with our lid. Very little waste of product falling into the boat. Because as you know, it's very expensive product. Okay, what, what's our working time? Because that's what I'm kind of nervous about. We have 15, 20 minutes of working time with a total cure time of about an hour. And that means that this hull has to get slid under that chain way. We drop the two together into the putty, into the methacrylate. Do we have to clamp it? We're gonna put some slight clamping on because we want, we don't wanna smush everything out of there. We wanna keep a good amount of bonding strength. And with both these products, you know, if you can keep those products about an inch, inch and a half thick, you're gonna have your maximum bond. And right here between our trough and our gap is right about an inch. And our gap between our deck, bottom of our deck and the top of our stringer is about three quarters of an inch. So we can't get any better of a bond than that, John. Taylor, I am telling you, you are getting the finest restoration on the planet. But what we need to do right now, guys, is take our last time out of the day to keep it right here because when we come back, we're gonna show you an anti-theft device from a company called Ghost. We installed one on the Taco Marine Project boat. And I think that if that's a concern in your life, this is gonna answer a lot of questions. We'll cover it right after this critical timeout. Don't cut out. The tool shed here at ShipShake TV is just getting open. 
We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're tuned into Ship Shape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. What we have in front of us today is a Ghost Nav Tracker 1.0, which is a system that we've uh, installed in the Taco Marine project boat. This is not only for security, but we also want people in the audience to be able to track the boat to where when we're at a marine company, like today, we're in Fort Lauderdale at Pacer Group's retail store. Right. We want them to be able to see it. And who we have on the program, guys, is the president and CEO of Ghost Global. This is Jay Keenan. And Jay, I want to teach not only myself, I want you to teach me, I want to teach everybody at home how we can get the app on our smart devices because I want to be able to follow the boat and I'm sure a lot of people at home want to get on social media and follow the boat. Okay, how do I do it on an iPhone? What do I do? So on an iPhone, if you go to the App Store and right. uh, just type in the search, uh, Ghost Space Global. Okay, how do I spell Ghost? G-O-S-T Space Global. Okay, and the multiple, multiples come up, which right. one? Uh, so you want to go for the Ghost Tracker app. Okay, got it. That's the key importance. Uh, oh, oh, now, now it says I need a, uh, I need a user pass or a username. Uh, we made that real simple as well. The username is projectboat at tacomarine.com. Okay, projectboat at tacomarine.com. What is the password? The password is one, two, three, four. And if you click the little save password button there, you never have to remember that again. Okay guys, so write that down so you can get it. This way, if you want to see where the boat is and actually peruse it, you know, check it out at a boat show, you can do that in real time. And, and, and could we track the boat? Like, I know it's going to Canvas Designers in Riviera Beach sure. after it's here at the store. Yep. How often does it, like, update? Uh, it's totally programmable by the user, but we'll set it to report every five minutes. So totally that... free app, guys. We're doing a big social media push on this. So if you want to see the boat and where it is at the really great companies in the marine industry that we're working with, it's available now to you. And Jay, if somebody wants to have a really great security device for the vessel, okay, and that's what we're doing on this boat. We're only bringing the best of the best. Absolutely. Okay, how do they get Ghost Global? Go to our website, which is ghostglobal.com. No H in Ghost again, G-O-S-T global.com. And uh, you'll find all of our uh, products and contact information for us. Mm -hmm.